Hello, body in the sky. Today we're gonna do cover lesson six of T B O N. That's take back our narrative. And the title of this lesson is gonna be speaking the whole truth about Sodom and Gomorrah. In this lesson, we're gonna cover detail the backstory of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the reason why it's important for us to take back this narrative is because over the past couple of decades, there have ver been various groups, Christian and non-Christian, who argue over the logistics of, or the reasons why Sodom and Gomorrah came to its ultimate destruction. They focus on two sins mainly, and that is the sin of, of, of violating a stranger that has come, that you're supposed to welcome into your city, your town, or home, and the sin of, of homosexuality. And what we're going to find in this whole backstory of Sodom and Gomorrah, there, way before you get to those two offenses, there is a crew of wickedness that is going to be covered. There are some offenses in here that are gruesome um, and very bad, way before you get to those two offenses. And we, as a whole body, have to cover this in detail so that we can make our next generation know and that we will make them fully aware of the sins and the wickedness that was comprised in Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's not as simple as two offenses. So we're gonna begin, but before I start with the backstory and the details of Sodom and Gomorrah, I wanna share scientific and historical facts. And I want you to go and look up um, two articles that back up the fact that the area in which Sodom and Gomorrah is comprised was destroyed and came to utter destruction. And the scientists have found during their research that there was some type of meteor shower or something. Now the Bible says Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire and brimstone. It rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah. And this whole region, even when you look at the fact that Lot's wife was turned to a pillar of salt, this whole region is very salty and have salt deposits in it. So um, go and look up this article that says, okay, I hope you can see it all clearly. Evidence of Sodom, meteor blast cause of biblical destruction, says scientists. And this is, article is by a woman named Amanda Brochelle Dan. And the article, as you can see, was it comes from a site that's called www.timesofisrael.com. And it was posted on November 22nd of 2018. Now, here is another article that was posted. This article is titled Sodom and Gomorrah Scientific Evidence. This article was written by a person named John Black. And as you can see, it can be found under www.ancientorigins.net. This article was posted in April 19, 2013. Now these are scientists that are finding this whole area that is the area of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, that it came to utter and sudden destruction. So I would like you, as far as part of this Bible study, to go and research that on your own, that scientists have found that, yeah, it has happened, like the Bible said, sudden destruction for that region. Now, we're going to cover the backstory of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to look in the book of Jasher, which is an apographer book that is mentioned in the Torah. As I told you before, um, the book of Jasher has the whole details of a lot of stuff that we see in the Torah, of the biblical history, but it gives us much more details of what's going on. And as you're going to see from this backstory, there is a large amount of, of immorality and wickedness going on far before, right before the destruction of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to cover this in the book of Jasher, chapter 18 and chapters 19, and also the story of, of, of Sodom and Gomorrah that's in Genesis chapter 18 and 19. So as we begin, I want to mention what how Lot 
the nephew of patriarch Abraham, ends up in Sodom and Gomorrah. So when we look in Genesis chapter 13, verses 10 through 13, we see that patriarch Abraham is given Lot the option of choosing the land where he, his people, and the livestock can roam. Because what's happening is the people under patriarch Abraham and, and the shepherds and, and people and the livestock, there's a conflict. Lot's people, they're fussing over the land where the livestock can graze. And so in order for there to be peace, Patriarch Abraham said, Lot, you pick some land. I'll choose whichever you don't pick. So Lot looked out and around the region of Jordan, it was very fertile. Uh, the grass was green on that side. And so he felt it would be the easiest place because it's rich and plentiful. So moral of the story, just because the grass is greener doesn't mean the environment is better as we're going to see. So that's how Lot, he chooses the region of Sodom and Gomorrah, and he moves there with his, his cattle, his livestock, and his family. So I want to share with you, um, first of all, the book of Joshua, chapter 18, verse 11, so we can get the mindset of how um, Adonai has perceived and sees Sodom and Gomorrah. So as we see, book of Jasher, chapter 18, verse 11, it says, In those days, all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against Adonai. And they provoked Adonai with their abomination. And they strengthened in aging abominably and scornfully before Adonai. And their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before Adonai. So as we can see that their sins and their wickedness were great before Adonai. It wasn't just two offenses that happened here. Now I'm going to share with you and summarize the backstory that's mentioned in the book of Jasher. Starting with verse 18 and 11 and going all the way through, covering all the way to the end of chapter 19 in the book of Jasher. But I got some points that are going to be made here, like A, B, C, D, through F. I'm going to cover the summary of these scenarios. Um, you can go on your own time and read the details um, of these scriptures. But as I summarize the backstory, I'm also going to highlight the sins that are have occurred. And along what happens in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, first in point A, we have this festival or celebration that the men, women, and children of Sodom and Gomorrah would partake in four times a year. They would gather their household and their possession and go down to this valley of Sodom and Gomorrah that had nice springs and things, and they would begin to rejoice and celebrate and dance. As they're celebrating and dancing, each neighbor would take their neighbor's wife or their neighbor's virgin daughter, and they would take them into their tent and sleep with them from night until morning. Then they would return that wife or that virgin daughter back to the tent and nothing would be said. They would go on as if nothing happened and everything was okay. So right here, for point A, we can see that the sins of adultery and molestation is occurring here. So those are two sins of wicked deeds. Now when we go to point B, here is where we cover how they behave towards strangers. Now in this particular scenario, if a stranger came to town and had possessions, the men, women, and children, even the elderly of Sodom and Gomorrah, would rob that stranger, take all of his possession, and then as he begins to cry out, they would taunt him while flaunting the possessions in his face. And as he's crying out, they're mocking him. So the stranger would be left with nothing after he's robbed by the whole town of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's leaving with bitterness of spirit. So you see here that 
the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah were covetous. They were stealing. They um, basically had corruption of justice because nobody would help them. Okay, so we see all of this happening right here. And even if they went to a judge, the judge would disregard them and the people would lie so they would bear false witness. We have even in here where there's a man named Hedad, H-E-D-A-D. He is a mischievous, evil man who befriended a stranger that came to town. When this stranger came to town, he begged this man to come stay um, with him in his household where him and his wife would feed them and also um, help to feed his livestock or the caravan that came with him. And so he begged the man as if he was being very honorable and hospitable to stay with him for two days. At the end of the two days, the stranger was like, I have to go. I have to be on my way. I have to leave. And so all of a sudden, his dad concocted this lie and said, remember when we were unloading this mantle of multicolors um, um, with the cords? Remember, you asked me to interpret a dream for you. And I interpreted this dream for you, and it was a good interpretation of good things. So you owe me three pieces of silver. And that stranger is like, I don't know what you're talking about. I never asked you to interpret a dream for me. You know, I was wide awake when we unloaded this mantle, multicolored mantle. So her dad would drug this um, particular stranger before the one of the wicked judges of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they pleaded their case. And all of a sudden, this wicked judge says, his dad is such an honorable man among Sodom and Gomorrah, <clears throat> so please pay him his money. You owe him. And this man is crying out, I never asked him to do this, interpret a dream. And then he dad had audacity to say, you owe me more than three pieces of silver. Anyway, the man uh, left Sodom and Gomorrah, and the people heard about what happened, and they went on and, and taunted this man as he left town. Um, he cried out to the Most High of bitter spirit, angry and hurt by the way he was mistreated in the wicked land of Sodom and Gomorrah. So you have the people stealing and bearing false witness, as I say. Now when we cover point C. Point C shows the treachery of the judges that are ruling over the land. And the judges have the people to build beds in the streets of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the purpose of these beds is that when a stranger would come to town, they would drag that stranger to one of the beds. Now, this goes to show the wicked imagination of the judges and the people who also backed up this treachery. If that stranger was shorter than the bed that they were forcing them to lie in, there would be three men at the head of the bed and three men at the foot of the bed they would pull and stretch this person's body until death. If that stranger or that man was taller than the bed that they were dragging them to, they would smash and squeeze that body until death. This goes to show their vile and wicked imagination. Their mentality makes me think of how uh, man's mindset was before the great flood occurred where Adonai says that every thought of man and every inclination was evil. They had a reprobate mind for them to do such treachery in the streets of the city before all the people and the people being okay with that. So look, when we go here to point D, here is where you have Eleazar. Eleazar is one of the right-hand men of Patriarch Abraham. Sarah asked Eleazar to go to Sodom and check on Lot to see if he's doing well. So as Eleazar is traveling, he sees a man of Sodom uh, beating up and a stranger and robbing him of his clothes. When Eleazar goes to say to retrieve this stranger's clothes, the man of Sodom picks up a stone and hits Eleazar in the forehead. And so blood is pouring from his forehead and the stranger, the, the sodomite man says, hey, you owe me money because I removed this blood from your forehead. And the others are like, uh, no, not going to happen. Anyway, this man of Sodom brought Eleazar before one of the wicked judges of Sodom. And this judge says, look, this is a custom in our land. If a person hits you in the head, 
and they remove blood from your forehead, then you owe them money. And so this is what Eliezer said. Oh, okay. So Eliezer picks up a stone and he clucks that judge in the forehead. And he said, since this is a custom in your land, it looks like you owe me money for removing blood from your forehead. So now pay this man a sodom what you owe me. And Eliezer walked off. They tried to extort Eliezer, bearing false witness. It didn't work, but look at the situation here. They were trying to extort Eleazar. This is a corruption of justice once again. Now, when we go on further and we look over here to point E, you have the judges and the people of Sodom and Gomorrah conspiring and saying, whenever a stranger come to our land, this is how we're going to treat them. They made a proclamation that when a stranger that is poor and needy comes to our land, we will give them silver and gold, but we will not feed them a morsel, not a crumb of bread. We will starve them to death. Now that's evil in its own right to mistreat a stranger that is poor and needy, to pretend that you're honoring them and giving them gold and silver, but making sure that they starve to death. Look, the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah were so evil that even when a woman would have compassion on that stranger and try to feed them, they would put them to death. This happened to one of Lot's daughters, a daughter named Paltith, P-A-L-T-I-T-H. She had compassion on one of the stranger and as she's bringing him water, she had smoked some bread within that water. And some of the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah discovered it, and they took her, Paltith, and they burnt her alive. They even did it to another young lady that had compassion on a poor stranger. They found that she was feeding the stranger. They took her into the city in front of all the inhabitants, covered her in honey, and let bees sting her to death. So this is how they treated the poor, the needy, the innocent. They would murder the innocents, even if they had compassion on the poor and the needy. This is treachery before the Most High God. So far before we get to F, where we see that there are the angels or the guests of Lot who come to warn Lot to get him to escape and to try and go and get his sons-in-laws and the other daughters out of town. They come to visit Lot in order to warn him. And the men of the town are so wicked is that they come in a gang and demand that Lot have these men come outside so that they may rape them. You're talking about raping some people you don't know who happen to be angels and servants of the Most High God. So far before we get to this offense here and these violations here, you have a whole volume of violations that are happening. So I'm going to cover with you guys some scriptures that um, reinforces the fact how God is offended and how God heard the cries of those men, women, and children or strangers who were caught up in the treachery of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, here's the first scripture I want to share with you. Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 through 21. Then Adonai said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great indeed, and their sin is very grievous indeed. I want to go down now and see if they deserve destruction, as its outcry has come to me. Now, in the setting of this particular scripture, this is after, this is where the three visitors visits Patriarch Abraham. Um, it's the two angels and one is Adonai. And this is what Adonai professed. If it were not for Patriarch Abraham interceding and asking Adonai, look, if you find 50 people who are righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah, will you still destroy the city? Adonai said, no, I'm not. If there's 40, will you destroy it? Adonai goes, no, I'm not. Patriarch Abraham is able to negotiate down to even 10 righteous people. And Adonai said, I won't destroy the city if there are 10 righteous people. 
So the fact that he still had to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, mean there were not even 10 righteous people. Adonai still had mercy because Patriarch Abraham was pleading because he was looking out for his nephew Lot and his family. So in having compassion, he sent the angels and the angels to warn and pull um, Lot out of the city. Now, his wife, Lot's wife, turned to a pillar of salt because she looked back. The angels warned her, do not look back. But when you read in the book of Joshua, you'll see um, probably verse 50, 52, 53. She had daughters that were left there. Those sons-in-laws and the daughters that chose not to come and didn't take Lot seriously, she felt bad and she was looking back at the city because she knew as it was destroyed, they would be destroyed. But when she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. <clears throat> but it still shows God's grace and mercy. Now I'm going to share um, with you some other scripture that goes along with how God feels about the wickedness that was carried on and the offenses in Sodom and Gomorrah. Here we have Exodus chapter 22, verses 22 through 20 through 23. And it says, you must not exploit or oppress an outsider, for you are outsiders in the land of Egypt. You must not mistreat any widow or orphan if you mistreat them in any way. And they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will burn hot and I will kill you with the sword. So your wives will become widows and your children will become orphans. So this goes to show you that God had issues and he's letting the descendants of Israel and all people know these are my rules. Do not harm the poor and the needy, the orphans and the fatherless. If they cry out to me, then I'm coming for you. Here, <clears throat> Here we have Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 through 50. And it says, Behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom, pride, gluttony, and careless ease. So had she and her daughters, and she did not strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. So they were haunty, that means prideful and arrogant, and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I removed them when I saw it. Now, notice down here at the bottom, I have two scriptures that you can go and read for yourself on your own, where Adonai continues to warn of the descendants of Israel and Judah. And we have Zechariah chapter 7, verse 10, and Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 3. And in these scriptures, he's saying, don't oppress, once again, the poor, the orphan, and the widow. And don't devise any evil against one another in your heart. Think about the evil that the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah and the judges perpetrated against those who were strangers and those within the city, even if they helped the poor and the needy. His God says also in these scriptures, execute justice, righteousness, rescue the one who is robbed out of the hand of the oppressor. Do not mistreat or do violence to the stranger. Now in those two scriptures, God is warning the descendants of Israel and Judah that if you do this, then I'm going to drag you into captivity. So we know that some of our ancestors that they did violate these rules. God is serious about the sins and the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah, and he wants us to be aware of the whole picture of it, not just two offenses, because this is a cautionary history, biblical history, to warn all of us in our future generation. So we have to do our best to protect the whole word of Adonai. But there are groups out there who try to say, oh, the, the whole moral of the, the history of Sodom and Gomorrah is that um, um, it's offensive to mistreat the stranger or someone that you're welcoming into town that's new. No, it's about sexual immorality. Let's get that clear. 
It's also about violating the, the stranger in your town and mistreating them. Uh, it's about murdering the innocent. Um, it's about having a vile imagination trying to destroy those who help the poor and the needy. It's about all these offenses, bearing false witness, lying, corruption of justice. All of these things are issues. Now, there are those who on the flip side will go, ooh, the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, that those people deserve to die. They should be put to death, you know, uh, their sexual sins and all this stuff. Hey, all of these sins that I mentioned that was perpetrated by the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah were punishable by death bearing false witness, murdering the innocent. I mean, the corruption of justice. You see what Adonai says about mistreating the poor and the needy and those who are robbed, delivering them, you have to deliver them out of the hands of the oppressor. All of these things were punishable by death if it were not for the grace of God and the mercy he is showing us through his Messiah, our Messiah, the Savior of the world, Yeshua HaMashiach. <clears throat> of all these things that were per perpetrated, this wickedness and the evil, the one thing that I believe that touched the Most High God most deeply is the offense that is made against the children. The children of Sodom and Gomorrah had no choice. What parents they were born to and the environment they were born in. And if anything we should take from this whole truth about Sodom and Gomorrah, be careful of the environment that you rear your child in. You see, I'm going to share this scripture. When we think of people who are caught up in a cycle of um, not just sexual immorality, from homosexuality, prostitution, uh, from adultery, a life of, of being a thief, a life of bearing false witness, a life of corrupting justice, all of these things, the root causes of them can be found in the household that certain people were brought up in. And if you are surrounded in an environment that makes these immoral things moral and normal, then that child is, is coming up crippled at a disadvantage as far as deepening their relationship with the Most High God. So we in the body of Messiah have to make sure to pray for, love on, and gird up those who have been in these environments that have groomed them for things that will cause them to deplete their spiritual life and love for the Most High God. Look at what our Messiah said. Here we have Matthew chapter 18, verses 6 through 9. And here Messiah says, Whoever causes these little ones to stumble, it continues to say, causes them to stumble. Basically, you would rather have a millstone tied around their neck and then dropped off in the sea, in the ocean. Adonai knew, even his son, his, our Messiah knew, look from ground up, I am so serious about you mistreating these little ones and causing them to stumble. Basically, be in a snare in a sinful lifestyle. So Satan is waiting to trap you. He goes on to say, talking to the adults now, Yeshua says, if your hand or your foot or your eye offends you, chop it off or pluck it out. See, he knew that a lot of men and women who may be caught up in a sinful lifestyle by some of the things that they see would cause them to have deep, depraved thoughts that would cause them to cross the lines of immorality especially sexual immorality. He knew that some adults would venture a line that would cause their feet to run to mischief and some immoral things that they should not be engaged with. And they would use their hands in immoral ways. And he said, it's better for you to chop these things off or pluck your eyes out than for you to burn in the fire of Gehenna. So this is because he knew that it would be on the adults who would nurture an environment or not nurture a sound environment for these children to be raised in. Body of Messiah, we have to carry this whole truth about Sodom and Gomorrah so we can be aware that we are the guardians of the next generation. 
we are the ones that have to nurture them. We have to do our best that we can to put them in an environment that will allow them to thrive with a moral structure that will allow their relationship with the Most High to, to thrive and increase and them to develop into exactly what God has created them to be. The creator of the universe loves every single one of us, loves us with an everlasting love, but we have to make sure to nurture that love by professing the truth. Well, body on the side, this is the end of lesson six of Take Back Our Narrative. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it was eye-opening. I hope um, that it was something that you've learned in this lesson that will cause you to draw closer to the Most High God. And as I always say to you at the end of every lesson, may Adonai Elohim shower you, cover you, shield and protect you and your family with his shalom peace. Goodbye.